<laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, the process I went through this summer when I was trying to build a spam filter, which implies I'm not done yet. Uh, but um, I'm not sure if I'm ever going to be done with this. Uh, so start out a little bit about myself. My name is Johan Broadfeld. Um, I'm a uh, computer engineer. I also took a class in artificial intelligence at Udacity last year. I'm a developer at Front IoT, and um, I'm a co-founder of the network Barrel AI, and uh, we host um, after works and presentations like these, and we also run some workshops. And if you're interested, there's more information on the website barrel.ai, and um, so join there. Uh, the spam filter I'm going to talk about is actually for the community City Poolana, and we should have at least four people from City Poolana here today. Yes. Uh, and that is a community that I've been part of building. And uh, the thing is, people invite each other on different events and have show social gatherings. And that's all nice and, and dandy. But sometimes, People do not agree completely on how these events should be held, and then they start to um, write angry comments at each other. And uh, that's not looking that good. So when new members come in and they see these nasty comments, they think that this is not my place and they leave again. So it's important for me to catch these before they catch fire. And we also, of course, have all these spammers with uh, uh, Miss Dana, who wants your email because she wants to marry you. Um, so I want to catch these before um, any members actually get to see them, or at least not that many members. So this is my attempt that I'm going to present to you today, how it went. I started out, uh, my interest in machine learning started in the beginning of year 2000, and then I tried to predict who horses uh, and see which, if I could figure out who was winning. Didn't went too well. Uh, I only had like three races in my data sets and uh, I was using Excel as a tool. So it wasn't that good. Um, so I want to catch negative comments, uh, basically. And I have uh, over hundreds of members uh, might read the negative comments before I get information about them. And I, as a um, administrator for this website, have responsibilities to clean up uh, nasty comments and remove spam and stuff like that. And um, negativity can actually lead to conflicts that kind of linger around in the forum in the community for years after, if they uh, get too large before we can manage them. So what do I have today to manage this? I have a simple word filter that looks for husband, love, beloved, and wife, and stuff like that. And so if, if I get any of these, I kind of delete the user. And then I have uh, a spam filter that looks if this user is posting the same comment like three or four times in a row, then I also just delete the user and, and all the comments as fast as I can. Um, and then I have this... Um, warning function so users can actually go in and click like a warning th triangle and uh, uh, we get an email of that um, warning this might take some time though and uh, uh, a lot of members might see the comments before we get any information about them and, and sometimes we don't get any information at all so this is the most technical slide in the whole presentation, so don't worry. Uh, this is the implementation I've been using uh, to kind of play around with the data I have. Uh, just I just wanted to see it. Uh, I use TensorFlow with Python, and uh, for you that are uh, uh, know that. I start with uh, creating an embedding vector. Uh, if you were in the previous presentation, you heard a little bit about that. It basically takes all the words in a comment and uh, assigns them to a vector uh, so you know kind of which space the the word is in. 
So you get more dimensionality on your data, not just a string of characters, which is neat. Then I use a LSTM cell, which is a lo long-term, short-term memory, which looks at the string and remembers some of the uh, data for longer time and some of the data for shorter time, just to see if, if they are important. So it's a special technique. Um, and then we can add multiple layers if we like. Uh, we can have some probability that we keep neurons. We do dropout. That uh, is a technique for um, eliminating or at least reducing the amount of overfitting you have of a network. And, and uh, we don't want that. Um, yeah. Then we can set the learning rate as well, how fast it should learn. Um, and this is returning a, a prediction. Uh, so we, we get a value on between 0 and 1, how probable this is a spam or not. So that's basically all. What labels do I have in my data set then? I have uh, some plus and minus buttons where people can like and dislike comments. I don't have that in all my data set, but at least uh, a quite an extensive portion. And then the warning function comes with these five labels. Wrong information, inappropriate language, threats, illegal content, spam and others. And I want to catch at least these, the wrong information. I I don't know how I should catch that and other, I don't know. I don't even think anyone used that one. Um, so when I run this, I hope that my bad data set is 100% bad and my, my good part of the data set is labeled 100% good. So this is what I want, but of course, the world isn't black and white. So we have these, the red one represents the error. And basically here you have the error from zero and, and that's the same size. And here the error from zero as well, it's a little bit larger. Here the error is from 100% and also there from, so I'm gonna use this image for most of my training data to visualize it. So I, I'm showing this so you understand what I'm trying to say. Anyone has any questions on this one? Okay. So I have 50,000 comments. That's great. Now let's run our algorithm. And what do we get? 98% accuracy. It's crazy, right? I'm done. We can go home now. That's how it works, right? Uh, wait a second. Where's my data? 0 0.020. All samples. What? And now I start to look at the code because, of course, you look at the code when something doesn't work. I'm a programmer, right? And I've been using the same algorithm with another data set and worked perfectly, worked fine. Why? Oh well, I only got 1,500 labels with negative labels and the rest is positive labels, okay? And I do the math and the network is really smart. It says, if I just say that it's okay, I'm 98% correct and, and I'm fine with that. <sighs> okay, so what do we do? We remove some of the good samples so we get like even it out a little bit. So we remove 47,000 samples. Mm, I don't want to do that. We could use this several times and have more negative, uh, more pos positive data. Um, I will do that later, but right now I'm actually quite happy to play around with a smaller data set because that means it's faster to train and see how the result com comes out, even though I might not get the best results uh, from my data. So 
Let's move on with this. A little bit too far. We need excitement here. So, let's see. 54% accuracy. Now I get something, at least. But these, what, what are these? That's the error from zero on top of here. So, so basically, this is labeled like positive, but the network is classifying it as negative. And these are negative labels that the network is classifying as positive. This is rubbish. I can't use this for anything. And of course, people click like and dislike on, on almost anything these days. So I figure I cannot use that. So we we'll just remove that from the data sets. Don't trust user input. That's one big lesson. <laughs> so we removed 2,600 samples and now we have 200 negative, 200 positive. <sighs> Getting a little tiny. Where's my 50,000? So we run and see what happens. Okay. Now we, we got a sparse sample, but we actually got 67% accuracy. And we have this bump here that says that these are probably negative, And we don't have that many. Okay, we have quite a few here, but not, not over there. So maybe I can use that. Um, yeah. Let's see what we can do with this. Yeah, we can pick those ones and, and say that maybe this works. So let's, let's look at the, the comments and see what does the data look like? Because we need to kind of verify what the, um, what the model have found. So we have negative comments that are correctly labeled as negative. So let's see. Hello, my name is Samira. I want a relationship with you. Yeah, we want to kind of remove that. If you're just here to whine, do it somewhere else. Okay, uh, kind of negative comments, that's fine. So, wrong. We have become a runner club, runner and working club, and everybody is welcome. How can that be negative? The model thinks that these exclamation marks is negative, perhaps. I don't know. Hi, my name is Dana. How are you? But that is negative. Why is that labeled positive? We need to fix that. Okay. And the neutral comments that are correctly labeled. You can bring your own bed linen. Everywhere, everything else is there, even a music player. Huh? That's nice. Uh, when we'll see you inside, then we'll see. I have a jacket and glasses. Yeah, sure, fine. And some bad samples. Nothing better than the past due days chocolate from Baluz. Mm, okay. Well, I think that's uh, kind of positive. I don't see anything negative with that. And then we have, sorry, I did not want to be the event organizer for you two late joiners. Uh, okay, that could be negative, could be positive. It's kind of a little, depending on who's reading, I guess. So we do some cleaning of the data. That's an important job when you do machine learning. You need to clean your data all the time. And I realize that when people press here and write something, they should actually have pressed here and written something because the comment was about the event, not the post, I think. So don't trust user input. Yeah. So let's, let's see what it was. The comment says, thanks for the nice event. And the warning says, this is obviously marketing of perfume. No. But if we look at the um, database, we can see that the ID 6840, 6840, that's correct. But this is an event comment, and this is an event. Uh. <laughs> Whoops. 
Uh, fix the code. Okay. Mm. Okay. Run again. Okay, now we got accuracy of 60%. Yeah, and we still have these spikes. Let's look at the data, see we f what we have. Labels positive, classified by the network as negative. The happy runners are still there. I, yeah. I'm try tired of playing for you guys. Yeah, sure. Um, first of all, the group is no more. Your behavior is bad. Okay, that's negative. Why is it labeled positive? The quality of the humor can be discussed, but mm, okay, might be going somewhere. And there's more. Hi, I'm Dana. Uh, that is classified as positive. And uh, line dance, anyone? But the problem is with this one is that Miss Dana was effective. She posted like 10 different messages like this. And I only marked one as negative, so I need to mark the rest ones as negative as well. Labeled negative, classified as positive. I just need to change the time and wake up early. That's not negative. No, that should be positive. Uh, what's only for girls? Discriminating. Uh, that's negative, I think. Ha ha ha! I have a blue cap with the text psycho. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's positive. Network thinks that's positive. I don't know what this. Sorry, I have to cancel. Have a nice day. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, sorry. It's an excuse. Why have the event in the middle of the week? It could be either way because you. The the organizer might think this is a quite negative comment because the organizer is trying to host an event and and put some effort into uh, assigning it. So it might actually be labeled negative because the organizer thought that that was an unnecess unnecessary comment. So why not? Um, let's clean some more. Now we're back here again. Selling perfume? What's going on? We actually have a warning about selling perfume on an event that doesn't even resemble perfume. So, I don't know where this got from. <laughs> Shit. <sighs> I need to clean up my database. Okay. We also have some sample comments. Why limit to eight visitors? This is a valid question. And stop complaining and do your own event is a response to that question, which I think is quite negative. Uh, but uh, that one got the uh, warning, an uh, appropriate comment, grow up. Let the host do whatever they like, I guess. And five thumbs up. Yeah. How am I going to do a spam filter on this? And the worst sample of them all. This is the really the nasty ones. <laughs> ah, shit. Okay. <sighs> Let's try again. Well starting to get there, 70%, and little bit less spikes here. Well, I think we're getting something. We tried this model on the entire data set, our 50,000 comments to see, can we use this for anything? And um, the accuracy is actually 72% on the entire data set. And, um, we have something that looks good over 80% here, but there's a lot of spikes. So a lot of positive labels 
that the network thinks are negative. So we need to figure out how to get rid of those. We can at least start to look at them. Marked positive, classified as negative. The bus departs 10.30 and arrives 11.45. Okay. I think the numbers here are uh, confusing the network because when someone is writing negative things, they tend to use more numbers than um, if they're not writing negative things. Um, and now we're getting into biases and the network is kind of biased to say that, okay, if it's got numbers, then it's, it's negative. There is a really good reason to discuss this topic. Okay, if you say so, I'm not sure. I like this site, but I would like to get notifications. Sh sure, that's not negative, right? These has paid Lisa, Eric, Jan, John, May, Lulu, Peter. Uh, th that's uh, sh we should do some GDPR tracking. We should create another network to figure out those because we're not supposed to to have those in comments, or we should at least know about them. I feel nervous, but at the same time excited. Okay, that's not very negative. Hi Lisa, have you been a m you have been a member since 2007 and still? Yeah, I cut the rest out for good reason. Cleaning data. <coughs> now we actually got more. That that's good. We have some more to train on because we actually used the 12 year data sets and we got some more labels from the some more negative labels from the large corpus that was unlabeled previously. So the network actually finds some more data for us to train on. Um, so that's good. We have been able to use it for something. And now I want to try to manipulate the um, different um, parts of the network. So we have one layer, we have uh, 256 LSTM cells, we have a batch size of 10, embed size of 50, dropout zero, and we get 70%. Okay, so we try to increase the dropout to 0 0.8 and uh, see what happens. Now we got 80%. That's good because we removed some overfitting and yeah. And then we increase the number of layers because we want to make the network smarter. Deeper network is more intelligent, right? They can figure out more features. Okay, maybe not. Maybe if we increase to six? Ah, wrong way. Uh, increase batch size? Great! Yes, run with that. Now we have 85% and it looks like this. Okay. Mm if we compare, we can see that this one is kind of slowly going up. This one has a little bit higher spike and yeah, this one has more data as well, as we can see. Let's try it on the big data set. And we got 75% accuracy. And we can compare, we have this little bump here, but we kind of still have a lot of positive samples that are hard to classify. So let's do an experiment. We pick only the hard ones and create a new network and try to classify only the hard ones because then we can kind of separate them out and see if we can. So here, here we can see that there are a little more gaps here and, some, uh, and, and very few here. So we have the data and I could actually use this uh, and have, because what is it? 350 emails I would get over the last 12 years. It's not that much. And uh, if I get all these black P uh, uh, negative, comments, I wouldn't mind getting all the positive as well. It's So I, I could actually use that. Um, but let's see what I can do more with this. So I do some cleaning of the data again. And now we have 300. We 
going up and down. <sighs> Running. What? This is rubbish. Run on the entire data set, see what we can do. Whoa, there. It's crap. It cannot figure out anything because we only trained on the hard examples, so the easy ones it, it doesn't care about and it doesn't know about them. And since they are hard, you probably can't figure out the easy ones either because you haven't looked at them at all. Bad idea. Don't do that. Now I try another method. I take the string. Thank you for this lovely event. Hope to see you soon again. And I split it up to small string. I chunk it up in pieces. Wait, wait, wait. There you go. What's this? I tried to figure it out, looking at the code, trying to debug. Turns out, the NVIDIA GPU memory error. Restart Conda and you're fine. Uh, the problem is that I was using one workspace for the network and then when I tried to chop it up into pieces, I created a new one on the side. But since I ran them at the same time parallel, they kind of interrupted their each other's memory in the GPU. Uh, no good, don't try that. <sighs> now, since the data is chopped into pieces, we actually got 22,000 samples to play with. Yay! Uh, the small samples, but still, we got some more. See how that goes. What? Accuracy 50%? What am I doing wrong? I'm still playing with the sort of data. <sighs> okay. But the, the random data was even worse, so uh, I don't know. I get to work and create some five letter, five word strings that are negative and classify them as negative. And now I can get this and then I can kind of sum them together and, and get a nice string. Uh, so let's see. And I want to send an email directory from my email so I can reply. Yeah, that's, that's Miss Dana again, I guess. I really n cannot. You're so terribly negative and just looking for errors. So the more red, the more negative, and the more green, more neutral. Thanks, Oliver. You are a star with all your knowledge. And here we have the exclamation marks, and they are obviously negative. Maybe we should just ignore exclamation marks. I'm also on the lookout for more friends, especially in Stockholm! <laughs> what? What's wrong in Stockholm? Obviously, a lot of negative things going on there. I need to check the events in Stockholm a little bit more, I guess. Mm. So, now we have these kind of uh, settings, but I want a score for the entire string, not for the simple words, so I want to kind of calculate the score and maybe we should use some max or mean or average but th it's not really good because some of them are it's, it's it's hard to differentiate maybe average plus max or something but that's also kind of just shrinking the uh, the possible answers try with some different algorithms this one is actually returning something uh, in, in different. You need the same number of words to be able to compare them. And the result is not uh, kind of within the 1 to 100 range. So it's not very useful. And then I, in order to get the same number, I tried to min average match max, but it still kind of flattens the data instead of widens it. 
So I try to kind of do an exponent. So if we have this kind of data and we run the exponent, we get this one. And that's good because the negative gets kind of pushed up and the positive gets kind of flattened out a little bit. So this actually worked quite well. And now I have chopped up the data because I didn't uh, want to write 12,000 samples. It's kind of tedious. Um, so in order to get something to train on. And let's see how this does. 54, kind of a flat line, not saying that much about the data, but we don't have that many negatives there, positive there, negative here. Let's see about the data. You are more pathetic than I thought. Thank you for revealing your true face. Okay, yeah, okay. Do you think I'm full of shit? <laughs> if Aljon in Haralid, yet a negative place, there's a seat in my car from Malmö. Malmö is positive. Let's <laughs> we love Malmö. Great. Welcome. Hot guys. Okay. Let's use 5,000 comments of our data and see if we can get something more interesting out of more data. Okay, 52% accuracy. But the real accuracy after the math where we look at each sentence is actually 68. So it's fairly okay. And if you think about it, each sentence contains equal amount of negative and positive comments if they are negative and all only positive if they are positive. So it's kind of a 50-50 if you look at the data, because the, f the points in the text that are negative are quite few. Um, so let's see what we get here. Hello, my name is Samira. After reading your profile, I would like to have a relationship with you. Great, but I don't think you are on the right website, because City Portland is not a dating site. It's a place where you meet people and have a beer, like Fou Café. I'm not negative. I remind you of the ridiculous of limiting seats to a certain age. Yeah, could be good to interrupt and, and tell the person that it's actually okay for the user to limit the age. We have that. Um, same here. I'll show up the third instead. Yeah, fine. Good. I was just kidding around. Not very negative. You never had anything but negative comments about others. Okay. How many times do I have to say it? Use sunscreen cream. Mm -hmm. Important, especially during the summer. And we usually spray pets. Is that 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 is not negative, right? <laughs> but if you talk about people <laughs> but uh, but how is my algorithm supposed to know that the uh, person is referring to a person and not a bug yeah okay we have some issues about that i see no mail in your profile and this is typically the the spam asking for mail in profile right but maybe I haven't understood how this site works this is just a uh, question. There's nothing negative about this. And understood how is also something people talk about. You don't understand what's going on here. It's negative. Don't forget to bring a tripod if you want long exposure time. Yeah? Nope, no shots in the bar when we got there for a cup of coffee. Why? Is no shots negative? May maybe we shouldn't have too much alcohol on the events. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Uh, we have to market your lunchbox when we recruit folks for Saturday. It makes no sense. 
I try to get two weeks of skiing in the Alps before Christmas and New Year. Yeah, that's not, <laughs> not a good time. <laughs> Should not be there. So we try to run this on the large corpus again. Oh, shit. And it was actually worse, and it has no spike over there. Not a lot of, of wrong negatives, but quite a lot of wrong positives. Uh, I don't know, 7% accuracy. I'm not sure I can use that for anything. Uh, let's look at the data again. Your arranged trip to Copenhagen was actually great, so I'll join again. Copenhagen, large city, negative. No, Haralid is not large, okay. Way. Yes, you poor guy had to ride moped back and forth. We had a burning hot car. Sounds like you have a very nice time, but here you go angry bitch. Was not intended to be offensive. <laughs> Whoa! This is hard for the network to get. How should it know that? Yeah, we need to get some implications here from part of the sentence. Hope you're having fun with the age discrimination. Uh, that's not a positive comment, I guess. <laughs> so, there's a lot of things when you run networks, and, and here is kind of the basic steps you want to go through when you try to run through this kind of process. You start with formulating a problem. In this case, I wanted to find spam or negative comments. And then I obtained the data. And I didn't really explore the data. I, I just put it in the model to see what came out. And I figured out that I had to go back here and, and look at the data and, and, and kind of uh, re-evaluate the data from the data source because it was r rubbish and then I go back and explore the data, run a model, explore, run a model, explore, run a model. So I haven't actually gotten to the implementation yet. Um, and and uh, that might be for the next talk, but this is the interesting part. Um, but you see, when doing this kind of project, you need to be prepared to actually face a lot of bad data, a lot of uh, questions and a lot of things that you not really understand why the network did one thing and not the other. Um, but uh, you can spend a lot of time uh, trying to uh, solve these kind of things. So what do we have as future improvements? Well, we can um, include the user who was posting, perhaps, because some users tend to post more negative and positive. But uh, then you have these G GDPR issues and uh, it might be quite biased because the next time that same person writes something positive, it might be classified as negative just because. And that's not good. Uh, we could split the labels into more categories, like is uh, sales, nasty comments, threats, uh, support issues, spam, so we can handle them separately because a spam is probably not the same as a negative comment. And those two, we might be better at catching those if we look at them separately. But on the other hand, uh, then I might just have like 10 negative samples or 20 and it, it wouldn't make sense to train the network on so few data. Um, but perhaps in the future. Uh, we could improve the pre-processing. Um, there's a lot of misspelling in the data set. There's a, a lack of spacing sometimes. So maybe we should have like this autocorrect engine run over the text and try to clean it up. Um, or uh, wrong letters. Um, we could also try to remove these exclamation mark and question marks because they might influence more because they are used both in 
exclamating negative things and exclamating positive things. Um, and a question mark can also symbolize like a negative question. Are you stupid? Or this is a good thing. How did you do that? So it might improve the, the result if we remove those. Um, maybe we could do some uh, stemming of words. I actually did that. Uh, so. Yeah, that could be. Um, so if I have a label, maybe I, I should change all the exclamation mark to pluses instead. And if it's negative, I change the exclamation mark to negative. It's a minus. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of um, notation you can use. If, if someone writes for upper caps, for example, you could kind of mark that word somehow. Um, and when I split the string into five word pieces, I might consider using 10 words instead and see if that gives more information, it keeps more information from the string. It might help. And um, maybe I could use multiple approaches to combine the results, like an RNN combined with some basic word uh, recognize, uh, recognition and uh, kind of filter out some of the um, negative sample positive that was classified as negative due to lack of certain words. Uh, potential problems, irony and ab ambivalence where, where people use the language in different way to insinuate things are extremely hard to kind of understand and that's a, a research project in itself. Um, so uh, and then we have the privacy issues. Uh, we should probably do a separate machine learning algorithm or something like that that could figure out where names and phone numbers and mail addresses and stuff like that are hidden in the data. Um, and if we use, um, like keep the names in the data sets, we actually can have certain users that are um, that people write about negative comments. Uh, and then if, since we only have like 300 negative samples and in, in 50 of those comments, there might be one person uh, get the negative comments, then that's 17% of the data. And that will say that every time someone mentions that person, this is a negative comment. And that's not what we want. So we kind of need to figure out how to remove names from the data anyway. Um, yeah, that's uh, all I had for my presentation.